Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating an infinite sum with factorials or maybe reciprocals of factorials or something like that. We have 1 plus 3 over 2 factorial plus 5 over 4 factorial plus 7 over 6 factorial and so on and so forth all the way to infinity and beyond. So how do we evaluate these kinds of sums? We're going to be using an identity and well-known infinite sum to evaluate this expression. And I'll be presenting two methods. So, first of all, I can go ahead and break down each of these odd numbers, which are in the numerator, as follows. 3 can be written as 2 plus 1. 5 can be written as 4 plus 1. And then 7 can be written as 6 plus 1. So that we have 1 and an even number, which is actually the same even number at the bottom, which is factorial. Because if you think about it, 3 and 2 are 1 apart, 5 and 4, 7 and 6, so on and so forth. So the numerators are odd numbers, the denominators are even factorials. That's how it works. Okay? So after doing this, we can basically write this as follows. 1 plus 2 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 4 plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 6 plus 1 over 6 factorial and so on and so forth. And then we can go ahead and separate this into two sums. This one plus this one. Make sense? So we can express it actually in two different rows. Maybe something like this. 1 plus 2 over 2 factorial and then 4 over 4 factorial and then 6 over 6 factorial. Let's just go ahead and write the ones. And of course, I'm saving the one in the first sum uh, with uh, even numerators and then the ones all the numerators are ones but the same denominators so it's going to be like 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 4 factorial plus 1 over 6 factorial and so on and so forth now when you add these in columns you're going to get 3 over 2 factorial 5 over 4 factorial 7 over 6 factorial and so on and so forth we're going to get the same sum right? But why are we writing it this way? Because if you think about it, you're probably going to realize, uh-oh, the terms in the top row can be simplified. For example, 2 over 2 factorial, we can write it as 2 over 2 times 1 factorial, 4 over 4 times 3 factorial, 6 over 6 times 5 factorial, and so on and so forth. And now we can go ahead and cancel out the 2, the 4, and the 6, so that this kind of gives us the sum of odd factorial reciprocals, like 1 over 1 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, 1 over 5 factorial, and so on and so forth. But guess what? The bottom row is even, so if you bring these two sums together, this one and that one, then you're going to get the following. 1, and then this is also 1, by the way, 1 plus 1, let's start with that, plus 1 over 2 factorial, plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial, plus 1 over 5 factorial, and so on and so forth. So what does this look like? Hopefully, you do know what this sum is equal to. By the way, if you really wanted to write it in the most complete form, you would probably write it as follows, 1 over 0 factorial, plus 1 over 1 factorial, because 0 factorial is 1, by the way, in case you didn't know, and there's a proof, which we can do later on, maybe. But anyways, this is going to be the sum. This is nice because like everything fits the pattern. So we can kind of write this using sigma. For example, this would be n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial. Now, how do we evaluate the sum? You either memorize it or you do know another sum that looks like this, which is the following. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the fourth plus 4 factorial. In other words, we can write this as follows. n equals 0 to infinity, x to the n divided by n factorial. And guess what this is equal to? This is the infinite series for e to the power x. Okay? Awesome. And from here, we can find the following sum. If you look at this carefully, all you have to do is replace the x with 1, 
because that's going to give you exactly this. So if x is set equal to 1, then we get n equals 0 to infinity, 1 to the power n, which is 1, over n factorial, which is e to the power 1, which is just e. Therefore, this sum that you've been looking for, or we've been looking for, and everybody has been looking for, is equal to e, or Euler's number, right? Awesome. This basically brings us to the end of the first method only. So stick around because we're about to start the second method. And you're going to decide which method you like better. And if you know of any other uh, ways to approach it, please let us know. We would like to know. We're müssen wissen. We're werden wissen. I hope I said it right. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and write this a little differently using sigma again. But I would like to exclude one because it just is better that way. So I'm going to put one on the outside and then sigma n equals one to infinity. And this also allows me to start with one instead of zero. And also the numerator and denominator kind of works out a little nicely. 2n plus 1 over 2n quantity factorial. Isn't that nice? You probably noticed, right? The numerators are one more than the denominators. And there are factorials in the denominators. Make sense? Now we can go ahead and write it as follows. 1 plus. Now this expression actually can be split up into the following. 2n over 2n factorial plus 1 over 2n factorial. So similar idea here. But we're going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit. We're going to write the 2n factorial as 2n times 2n minus 1 factorial. So we're going to expand it once. And that way we can kind of make it a little better. Now notice that the 2n cancels out. We end up with 1. So now this becomes 1 plus 1 over 2n minus 1 factorial. So these are the odd factorials one more time. 1 over 1 factorial, 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 5 factorial, dot, dot, dot. Plus this one is evens, 1 over 2 factorial, 1 over 4 factorial, 1 over 6 factorial. And again, that gives us the exact same thing, 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial, plus 1 over 4 factorial. And you can write as many terms as you, you wish, but at the end, this is going to equal E, which is Euler's number one more time. I, I don't know if I included the answer e from Wolfram Alpha. I probably forgot. But sometimes Wolfram Alpha is actually, Wolfram Alpha is pretty interesting because it, can, it says sometimes Wolfram Alpha does not understand your query. Sometimes it does understand. Of course, you have to prompt it the right way. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.